And I'd like to welcome into the Triple R Studios again, Mr. Astadki. Thank you for coming in. Thank you for inviting me back again. It's my next time, second time. It is. It's, uh, I think it's beautiful. Oh, it's great. great to be here. You have fun in Melbourne, do you? Oh, yeah. I'm uh, really enjoying myself. And uh, last time was really a good experience. Uh, I had a fantastic crowd. Audience was so great. Uh, the music and the band. I just really had a nice time around last time, yeah. Great. The last time uh, you came out was to headline the Melbourne Jazz Festival. And i, I got to say that you made that jazz festival, uh, you know, the best by a long, long way. So thank you for that. That was great. Thank you. Thank you. It's really great to be back again here, in a way. Oh, cool. Because yeah. the, the jazz festival show that you did at the Forum, which was beautiful, was, uh, was sitting down. But this time, we're going to be playing a standing up gig at the club. Yeah, well, you know, um, I had this experience both you know, yeah. playing on the theatres and also playing you know, in small clubs and things like that. But um, I think it's uh, the smaller and more intimate, you have more chances to really uh, communicate with the audience. Yeah. And uh, the music also, I think, could really uh, be successful in, uh, probably in a, a smaller crowd and things like that. I think it is, yeah. Yeah, I think it's, it's, it's uh, really fun. It's really fun to do that. That's true. And because your new album, Malatu Steps Ahead, which is out on Strut Records, is, uh, is a fantastic album, but it, it is very jazzy. It is, and, and, but there is also a great groove in there, which people do want to dance to. Well, it's, uh, you know, it has uh, both kinds of feeling yeah. uh, to that thing. Uh, one is, as you said, you can sort of dance and enjoy, and other part is... Um, which I've experimenting on the Ethio jazz to the new directions of Ethio jazz. Mm -hmm. um, means like before, like I used, we do um, melody or we do anything in one modes. And on Ethio jazz, on steps ahead, uh, maybe you listen to the music called um, the Ethio jazz um, or Ethio blues. Mm -hmm. It's a composition called Ethio Blues. Oh, yes. There we've been experimenting, going through to different modes at the same time. Wow. So that's, that's what really makes it uh, the album Steps Ahead because it's a, a new direction to Ethio jazz music. You're taking it to the blues? Well, it's not, actually, well, it's not actually blues because um, blues usually like uh, has a standard... Uh, uh, forms there. That's true. But even though we have the standard forms, but this one uh, automatically just goes from one mode to different modes to different modes again, you know, so they, this one just keep changing. But um, the form is there, but the approach, the harmonic approach mm -hmm. is entirely different. This is uh, why uh, we call it a step ahead, because I've been experimenting on, you know, uh, different modes going and the same compositions, which makes it very interesting. That it is, that it is. Yeah. Now, Triple R listeners who are lucky enough to hear you, you were interviewed uh, last year or earlier this year on uh, NEO Styles Styling, and he uh, he went through all all of your history and, uh, and, and how you got to where you are. And uh, just to briefly surmise, you were uh, one of the first African student taken in at Berkeley College in America, and uh, and then you spent some time in New York City, where you formed a group called the um, uh, the Ethiopia Quintet. Now, um, tell us how, uh, how how your time was there, and how Ethio Jazz were formed, and what what is Ethio Jazz for the people? Well, um, Ethio Jazz is uh, five against twelve, means five notes, which most of our music composes on. And we have four different modes to compose our melodies as well. Um, and then against to that was 12 soul music. Mm -hmm. Well, <clears throat> you know, it's not like I, uh, easy as I'm talking about because uh, especially when you're doing fusing or fusion works, you have to really have to be careful. Like one doesn't dominate another one. Mm -hmm. The aim uh, of these compositions is was Ethio jazz. So the modes of the Ethiopian mode has to reflect much uh, than the other parts of, of that music inside, you know. 
So that takes quite a while to really put together this and uh, work it out like one doesn't dominate another one. Uh, well, it took a while, but I managed to come up with something beautiful fusion. Well, you did more than manage, my good yeah. man. You created something incredibly beautiful. Yeah, that was like 42 years ago, yeah. which is so great. While we're mentioning 42 years ago, maybe we should have a taste of something uh, from your first ever record, uh, Afro Latin Soul, the uh, Ethiopian Quintet. My kids love this song. It's keep called Ifaram Gummy. Ah, Ifaram Ifaram. Gummy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. I like to think of it as kind of desert island music. I would happily only take Ethio Jazz to a desert island. Uh, welcome back to the studio. Uh, Malatu Astatki is here in person talking about uh, his uh, very amazing life. Thanks for coming in. Thank you again. Uh, a pleasure, a pleasure. Now, um, we sort of mentioned sort of back in the sort of 60s and how you sort of formed Ethio Jazz. And then... Um, it, it, it sort of seemed, I don't know, uh, was the spotlight not really on you back then? Because it seems uh, there was this French series on the La Rome label called the Ethiopiques, which was a 20-CD compilation of, of Ethiopian music, and um, that brought to light to us, uh, you know, like here in Melbourne, uh, the majesty of Ethiopian music, and especially Volume 4, which which, you know, was all your music. That's what people are clambering for. Um, did you did you find when that, that series came out that things sort of started uh, changing for you? Or no. That- you see, um, that came after the three albums mm-hmm. made in America. Yes. And uh, this music was also very well liked and very well accepted. New York areas, mm. uh, in Boston, where I was around, and uh, even the West Coast someplace, because they used to play it on radio, yeah. uh, and I also have to have a program play on television in New York, mm-hmm. and um, also club dates and concerts. So Ethio Jazz was actually very well established in, in America before the Ethiopic series started. Uh, what happened with the uh, Ethiopic series is those are the music I did in Ethiopia after returning back mm-hmm. from America. Yeah, right. So uh, what actually was uh, there was uh, somebody there called Amaha. Um, yeah, the label called Amaha labels in Ethiopia, uh, which are actually. Um, I did this music uh, just to introduce to the public mm-hmm. of what Ethio Jazz is then. And we did it only for the Ethiopian crowds, only for Ethiopian people. Mm-hmm. And we signed this contract with this guy just to do it for the Ethiopians. But I don't know how it gets into uh, the French company. Yeah, right. Uh, without we knowing. I think uh, the guy was signing with the other guy without discussing with us. Oh. So this is what really happened, and it came out. Yeah. And, uh, well, we don't want to have any problem with the with the Ethiopian mm. uh, producer or whatever. So this is how it happened. But uh, anyway, uh, it helped uh, for Ethiopian music to be known in Europe. Mm. Uh, it was been known in America before, but uh, didn't have really that much uh, chances to be known in European countries. So this is what happened. So yeah. the Ethiopic series was uh, uh, introducing this music to the European audience, and it helped a lot. But I think um, the Ethiopic series was also only to a certain of crowds. Mm. But what really made it to my opinion, was the Broken Flowers film. The Jim Jarmusch Jim Jarmusch. Yeah. Really took, all, took it all over the world. Really? 
series, and it was really um, we won also the Cannes Film Festival, mm-hmm. and uh, and I started having also um, a great film goers crowds to my music. Oh, yeah. And it really, really made it really big then, you know. So and that was that was a big difference. The uh, broken exactly, flowers. Happened. Exactly. That that's just explored everything. Mm. You know? And uh, which he probably got from the French series when he heard those CDs or something. Or yeah, yeah. Well, well it was actually uh, I met Jim Jamosh. Oh yeah. Yeah, I met uh, I met him in New York. Was he a smooth cat? Uh, yeah, but he's a really great man. Very cool. interesting man. He came over to my. Uh, Concert I was playing in New York at the Winter Garden. Oh yeah, and uh, it was really very successful, a beautiful concert. And his secretary called me up at the hotel and she said, "We'll come over tonight to see you." But I never met Jim before, mm-hmm. so he came over and uh, after the concert he came backstage with the whole crews and everything, and we met there. And uh, he said, "Look, I've been listening to your music like six, seven years." You know? And, and I was also looking for other music for my films. Oh, yeah. But he said, finally, I really fall in love with your music, Mulatu. He said, I want to use it yeah. for my film. So I, and I said, okay, go ahead. Just just use it. And then after three months, he contacted me. Uh, that's how it happens. Uh, really big. That's great. That's yeah. great. Yeah. yeah. It was a great movie, too. Bill yeah. Murray's goofy face with some beautiful, sublime music underneath. Charlotte, Charlotte Stone and everybody. Was yeah. It, yeah, so very interesting. Yeah, it was great. It was fantastic. Yeah. yeah. Uh, a- another, uh, another, I'd say, maybe turning point in your career was um, this work you did. You did a great album with uh, the Heliocentrics, which was a... Um, an, an English sort of funky psych jazz band, which uh, I, I personally think this album is an absolutely outstanding record. I have to congratulate you. Thank you so much. We won the best city of the year last uh, last year, remember, in Paris. Really? Yeah, because I called me award for this. Oh, wow. Yeah, in Paris. Uh, it was awarded to me by the mayor of Paris. Oh, and it was, it was a big thing, I tell you. So we won the best city of the year award. Well, I yeah. you see my face, there's no surprise <laughs> here, my friend. I'm that was Stone really great. Man. I thought that was nice. That yeah. was really nice, yeah. Oh, that's great. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. Well, well done. And uh, and you're actually touring at the moment with uh, James Arbor, the uh, sax player from the Heliocentrics. He Well, you know, uh, James is here with me. Great. And, uh, you know, I have also formed a group called Steps Ahead. Oh, really? Yeah, that's a, in a England now. Okay. Which, We've, just, we've done a very interesting um, concert in Norway, and I was also in, uh, in Italy, at the Nevada City, mm-hmm. which I've also been awarded the golden key of the city as well. Really? In Nevada. Yeah, it was really very interesting, you know. So James plays uh, with the... He's on my group. as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He, he plays in my group. And uh, also with Helocentrics. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we are here again to give uh, us the groove. Uh, yeah, so we can get into the groove and nice. get in the middle of these horn sections and really get the mm. feel of it your jazz. Uh, because James has been working with me on my materials for quite a while. Fantastic. So I think we can get into the groove. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Let's hit the kids with a groove right now, shall we? Off this album, Malatu Ostatki and the Heliocentrics, inspiration information. We're going to play an old 60s or 70s song called Malatu, but uh, reinterpreted by this uh, fantastic collaboration. We'll be right back. Mm-hmm. 